Today.com, the House voted Wednesday to pass legislation that could ban a very popular social media app in the U.S. And former President Donald Trump has officially acquired enough delegates to secure the Republican presidential nomination. Plus, it's a full circle moment for a migrant who authorities deported after a bailout in Goliad County nearly two years ago will tell you his latest actions that got him back in the Goliad County Jail. And we got a chance for some severe weather possible coming our way this weekend before the front comes on Sunday. Take a look at that in the weather coming up. The East Titans over at Whataburger Field yesterday. I'll have highlights and scores coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the 14th day of March 2024. The time is now 6.31 on our Thursday morning. And it is Save a Spider Day. The spiders will come in handy as the mosquitoes yes, come out. Big time. But Parker wants to demonstrate his pie ability. Yeah, because today is National Pie Day. So, pie is equal to... 3.14159265358979223842695 Wow Parker That's what I know <laughs> Something I'll alert I picked up when I was in school, high school. Oh, it's so great! And what is pi, anyways? Is it like the circle? It's a, it's a, it's the the uh, it's the number to uh, kind of de determine the curvature of a the circle, which is infinite. Infinite. It's infinite. There's infinite numbers in <laughs> pi. And you're talking about rain. Your weather poll is so funny. Yes. You're I'm, asking if it should rain every day. Yeah. It's a would you rather weather <laughs> poll for today? Ask if you would rather rain every day or once a day, but. Speaking of the rain, we do have some rain coming our way this weekend. Not even just rain, but possibly some severe weather. But we're going to talk about that in just a second, because if you're all tuning in with us, you're looking live in Victoria. Looking at the loop right there, 463, where it's a little warm out there, 71 degrees, but dew point, one degree off. It's a little bit humid as well, 96% humidity. But we're not expecting fog. It says three-mile visibility, but the winds are a little bit breezy out there. Probably gusting about 20, 25 right now, so please be careful. It's a bit breezy out there this morning. Right now, look at your visibility. I know it says it looks like it's foggy, but that's not very foggy it's because of the winds right now coming out of the south, southeast sustained at about 15 miles an hour. But looking at your weather headlines for the rest of this week, it is going to be warm and windy today. Those winds are actually going to increase as we go into this afternoon, gusting probably 20, 25 miles an hour, sorry, 30, 35 miles an hour this afternoon. But like I was saying, we do have some strong to severe thunderstorms coming our way this weekend before the front arrives on Sunday. Today getting up to about, I think about 81 this afternoon before we drop back to 70 tonight. But like I said, those winds today gusting around 30, 35. This one says 25, but I think 30, 35. But like I said, we do have severe weather possibilities coming our way this weekend. I'll take a look at that more in just a few more moments. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The House voted Wednesday to pass legislation that could ban TikTok in the U.S. The vote passed 352 to 65, with one member voting present. Legislators on both sides of the aisle have sounded the alarm that the app is a national security threat. TikTok is owned by a China-based parent company, ByteDance, and has started an aggressive lobbying campaign to kill the bill, arguing that it would violate the First Amendment rights of its 170 million U.S. users and harm thousands of small businesses, influencers, and content creators that rely on it. The bill now heads to the Senate, where it faces an uncertain fate. U.S. Representative District 27 Michael Cloud voted in favor of the bill targeting TikTok. Lawmakers say the owner of TikTok, which has more than 170 million users, is obligated to the Chinese government. But the president says he will sign the bill. We'll go to Washington later for the latest on the ban. Former President Donald Trump has officially crossed the threshold of delegates needed to secure the Republican presidential nomination. That means there will be a rematch between Trump and President Biden just hours after Biden secured the Democratic nomination. Trump dominated the GOP primaries and caucuses, losing just Vermont and the District of Columbia to Nikki Haley, who ended her campaign following Super Tuesday. He did all of this without ever stepping foot on a debate stage. 
A man detained after a bail at Angoliet almost two years ago has found himself back at the Goliad County Jail. Authorities deported Joaquin Garcia Hernandez following that bailout in June of 2022. His latest arrest in New Jersey got him extradited back to Goliad County. He faces several charges this morning, including engaging in organized criminal activity, evading arrest or detention with a vehicle, and criminal mischief. He remains jailed on a $41,000 bond. Authorities say he's ineligible for release unless he's deported again. Republican Jeannie Morrison says she's concentrating on transitioning out of her position as District 30 representative. She says she wants to make the transition of power to her successor as smooth as possible. This all comes after Morrison decided to not seek re-election after serving more than 20 years in the seat. The candidates vying for the position, former Jackson County Sheriff A.J. Lauterbach and former Victoria Mayor Jeff Bachknight, they will face off in a runoff on May 28th. Whenever you have a lot of people that want to run, I mean, normally there is a runoff. And so uh, I'm looking forward to the next couple of months and uh, getting ready for the next successor for my job and um, going to be working hard for the next year. So uh, I will still be the state representative till next January. Morrison has endorsed former mayor of Victoria, Jeff Bachknight. And that leads us to your reviewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there in your screen to take part. We ask you, who are you supporting to replace Jeannie Morrison? Jeff Bachknight or AJ Lauterbach? Okay, 26% of you say Jeff Bachknight, and 51% of you say you're backing AJ Lauterbach. And 23% of you say you're going to vote for Stephanie Basham in the general election. That's in November. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. Many automakers, including major U.S. brands like Ford and General Motors, are scaling back or delaying their EV plans. Sales of electric vehicles are still predicted to increase in years to come, just not as much as automakers expected. As a result, manufacturers are shifting to a mixed offering of vehicles with lineups of gas-powered vehicles alongside hybrids and fully electric options, delaying the rollouts of an all-electric lineup. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave during their weekly meeting on March 6. Calum County Commissioners created an emergency communications director position to oversee operations of their new combined dispatch center. Plus, a historic cemetery was rediscovered near Magnolia Beach by a member of the Calhoun County Commissioners Court. You can read the story and more at theportlavacawave.com. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the like button, and click that notification bell. The time is now 6.37 on our Thursday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. We take a tour of the old Victoria Jail. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The House passes a bill that could potentially ban TikTok in the U.S. What this means for the 170 users in America coming up. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your school bus forecast, followed by your weather and health forecast, and later on sunrise, take a look at the possible severe weather that's coming our way this weekend.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all tuning in with us this morning, you look at live in Quero, where it's a little bit cloudy out there, a little bit warm, and a little bit humid. I don't know why it says it's raining right now. Uh, looking at the radar, it doesn't look at maybe a little bit of drizzle, maybe come down on El Nu and Quero, but not that bad. A little bit warm, like I said, 72 degrees out there, but dew point two degrees off. We've got 94% humidity, so it's a little humid out there. Not enough for fog. I know it says five mile visibility, but we got a little bit of breeze out there, which is mixing the atmosphere. So please be careful on the roads for the wind, not the fog. But if you're seeing your kiddos out the door, they don't have to worry about the wind. Maybe if they're standing out there waiting for the bus. About 71 degrees as they're heading out the door. Breezy and humid out there. But as they're heading back home, about 3, 4 p.m. this afternoon, 81 degrees. going to be nice and warm and also a bit windy as well. Actually going to pick up in gusts probably 30 miles an hour this afternoon at times. So please be careful if you're driving today or even if you're just walking around. But with the wind in place, we do have some tree pollen and grass pollen high today. So please, might be a good idea to take an allergy pill. But we do have some severe weather possible coming our way this week. And we're going to look at that in just a few more moments. We're going to take a look at your sports with Zach Brown. Over at Whataburger Field in Corpus, Victoria East taking on the Carroll Tigers in some zone crossover action. Carroll actually is who knocked East out of the playoffs last year. We had a very low scoring game, but the Victoria East Titans able to add to their lead in the sixth inning. Xavier Ortega sacrifice fly to left field. Titans take a two to nothing lead. Now check this out, a pop up in foul territory. Kaysen Coley sheds his mask, nice sliding catch to end the inning. And well, Carroll's got a pretty good catcher too. His name is Dave Palomo. He is a UTSA signee, shows his defensive speed and the Tigers almost turned the double play in the seventh. Titans trying to add to their lead. Coley's pop up in center just does fall. It wasn't quite caught. The Titans had a run. They are able to shut out Carroll three to nothing in seven innings, maybe getting a little bit of revenge from last year. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach. All right, we want to invite y'all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. The big question this morning, could TikTok, which is owned by a Chinese company, eventually be banned in the U.S.? House lawmakers have approved a bill with bipartisan support that could potentially lead to a ban. So what happens next and what exactly would this bill do? This morning, social media users in the U.S. are left wondering if TikTok's days are numbered. The bill is passed. After the House overwhelmingly passed a bill that would force TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell the app or have it banned in the U.S. We are in a cold war with China, and some of my colleagues want to ignore this fact. Every U.S. national security agency says TikTok poses a national security threat, claiming its owner ByteDance is beholden to the Chinese government, which could demand access to the data of TikTok's 170 million American users. But critics of the bill say legitimate concerns about the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, could set the U.S. government down a dangerous path. The answer to CCP-style propaganda is not CCP-style oppression. Let us slow down before we blunder down this very steep and slippery slope. Republican Thomas Massey you know, argued the bill to, fails to, to address the U.S.'s problems. overall reliance Just on China. You know, we're sitting here with phones made in China. We're wearing suits made in China. You're going to tell Americans they can't put a piece of software on their computer. TikTok says the bill violates constitutional rights of its users, many of whom earn a living running businesses on the app. And TikTok CEO has argued the company stores its American data in the U.S., not China. Experts also question the impact of a potential ban. India, the world's largest democracy, banned TikTok in 2020, but ByteDance still reportedly has access to the data of Indian citizens who use the app. And here in the U.S., other social media platforms sell users' data, potentially posing the same kind of security risk. One expert tells ABC News it's a nice symbolic bill, but it doesn't actually make us safer. President Biden has said if Congress passes this bill, he will sign it. A risky position in this election year where the president is struggling to win over younger voters. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. On Wednesday, around 30 people joined the Victoria County Sheriff on a tour of the old historic Victoria Jail in downtown. The bottom floor has 
some county offices, but the upper floors seem frozen in time and need a lot of work. Restoring the jail would cost about $5 million. The debate continues on whether to save the jail as part of the city's history or tear it down to make way for growth. Commissioners will take up the issue in the near future. If you'd like to see the full 15-minute tour, go to our website, crossroadstoday.com, and it's also on our YouTube channel. And here's a look at some of the top headlines you can read in the Crow Record. DeWitt County Commissioners had a full meeting, or rather a full agenda on Monday, and the Chamber of Commerce held a red carpet banquet. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. The time is now 645 on our Thursday morning. Still to come on Sunrise, we hear from the SJRC Texas Belong, a foster care and advocacy group hosting a baby day here in the Crossroads. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, Crossroads. We do have a chance for some severe weather coming our way tomorrow, Saturday, and even Sunday as well as possible. But look at what's going on here. We got this upper level low at the deep one over there, over there, excuse me, over there in the central Rockies. But what's really uncommon with this low, it's going to move southwest, a little closer to the Baja California and California border over the weekend. And it's going to kind of hang out over there for a couple of days before it slowly starts pushing east towards the New Mexico and Arizona border and finally starts dissipating as it gets a little closer to the panhandle of Texas, but that's gonna give us lots of cloud cover and even the rain and thunderstorm chances. Looking at your future tracker here. Today, we're not really expecting any showers. If you do see a shower today, you'd happen to be 
extremely lucky, and I think you should go bet in Vegas because it might be one, one light shower there. But coming away tomorrow morning, we might see a better shot at the showers and thunderstorms. And then going into tomorrow night, after the clouds clear, get a little bit of warming the surface, we might have some severe thunderstorms you can see here. In fact, it's, it might be a little severe, and the National Weather Service issued a severe weather risk for some of our northwestern counties. But we're going to take a look at that and more in just a few more moments because I think Carolina has a guest this morning, so I'm going to toss to her. I'm now joined by Melissa Loyola. She's with SJRC Texas Belong. They are a nonprofit focused on foster care advocacy for parents and children. Welcome, Melissa. Hi, thank you. So y'all have an event coming up here in the Crossroads. It's Baby Day. Yes, it is. Can you talk to us a little bit about this? Is this a, an event just for foster parents and those uh, fostering infants? Yeah, so our event is actually open to the community. Open so to the community. Any parent or oh, caregiver wow. can come and join with a uh, family. Zero to age three is the focus of um, the event that day. But any family can come. It's free to register. We just try to keep it numbered so we know how many to expect. And we will be hosting it at the Victoria Public. Public library. So what can we expect uh, presentation wise? What are we going to learn? Yeah, so Baby Day is just a celebration of families with children age zero to three and we provide different family engagement opportunities during the time of Baby Day. Um, so if a family is coming in, when we do, um, we offer them a developmental bag so they can actually take home goodies with them and practice some of the things that they're learning at home with them. Oh, wow. um, and then during the event, we offer things like story time, infant massage, baby food making, we're doing a pop till you drop session. So just lots of different ways that we're going to be engaging with parents to help them um, engage with their little one at home and help them learn and grow and develop those milestones. What has it been like holding these events across the state? It's been really exciting. So we, um, our agency, SGRC, started out only um, with a site in New Braunfels. Last year, we expanded to um, the Pleasanton, Jordanton area. And this year, we have Vic added Victoria County. So we're all three locations um, this year. So we're super excited. Wow, we have a big foster community here, foster care community here in Victoria. So I know we'll have a lot of parents interested. Let's go ahead and share the details. It's gonna be Saturday, yep. April 27th at the Victoria Public Library. And it's gonna be from 10 a.m. to 12.30? That's correct. And how can we register? Yeah, so just um, if you'll go on our SJRC Texas Facebook page, you can see our event and it has the link to register. Again, no cost. It just helps us get an idea of how many to expect. Wow, well thank you so much, Melissa, for everything that you and Texas Belong, SJRC Texas Belong, everything that y'all do to keep, to keep families together and to keep them striving to be their best. Yes, thank you so much, we're very excited. All right, well, coming up, don't go anywhere, use to know before you go.
In Chicago, an 11-year-old boy has died and his pregnant mother severely stabbed following a reported domestic violence incident. Early Wednesday morning, police arrived at a home to find the child had suffered an injury to his chest and a 33-year-old woman stabbed several times. Both were taken to the hospital where the boy died. His mother, eight months pregnant, listed in critical condition. Her fiancé, the father of the unborn child, says he knows the suspect. Police say they have one person in custody. Authorities have not released any information on the relationship between the suspect and the victims. A one-year-old is dead after a dog attack in Connecticut on Wednesday. Authorities in East Hartford say the baby was bit several times by a dog while at a home. After being transported to the hospital, the child died. The victim has not been identified. Police say two dogs were removed from the home, one of which was involved in the attack. Sheriff deputies in California fatally shot an autistic teen last Saturday, the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department says 15-year-old Ryan Gaynor was holding a gardening tool at the time of the incident. Deputies responded to a 911 call from the home about the teen assaulting family members and damaging property. Body cam footage shows Gaynor raised the blade of the tool and ran toward the deputy. That deputy and another one fired their weapons at the teen who later died at the hospital. It's still unclear whether the deputies knew Gaynor had autism. County Sheriff Shannon Dickus said during a news conference Wednesday, deputies had responded to the house five times in the past and Gaynor had been previously taken to a mental health facility. An update in the investigation of a missing college student, the Tennessee Alcoholic Beverage Commission has launched an investigation to determine if Riley Strain was overserved alcohol at a Nashville bar. He's been missing since last Friday after reportedly getting kicked out of Luke's 32 Bridge Bar in downtown Nashville. As Tennessee state law prohibits serving alcoholic beverages to someone who is visibly intoxicated, the TABC is investigating to see if any violations occurred. The 22-year-old attends the University of Missouri and was visiting Nashville with his fraternity when he got separated from his group. Authorities are continuing to search for strain. Victoria home prices rose last year. A Texas retailer's report shows the median price of homes in Victoria rose 4% in 2023. The median home price is now almost $240,000. 780 homes were sold in the Victoria area last year. That was down almost 24% from 2022. And that also, the report also shows the availability of homes priced under $300,000 dropped over 21% since 2017. More than 80 music artists and multiple panelists have canceled appearances at South by Southwest over the U.S. Army sponsorship of the event. You can read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crosswordstoday.com. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crosswords Today. Plus, you can find it on your connected TV. Just search Crosswords Today Plus. And let's get a look at our forecast with Parker. Parker here, it's going to be warm and windy. You would be correct, Carolina. It is going to be warm and windy. In fact, if you're tuning in with us right now, you're looking in Victoria. These are Victoria, that is, where it is, like I said, a little warm, a little humid as well, and a little bit windy. It's sustained at about 60 miles an hour in the south southeast, which I just went outside and, and double checked to make sure I'm not crazy. No fog with the wind out there right now. But like Carolina was saying, it's going to be nice and warm today. I think it's going to get up to about 81 this afternoon. Warm and humid, and like I said, breezy as well. Looking at your wind gusts today, I think those gusts can be up to 30 miles an hour maybe even 35 miles an hour are possible at times today before they finally start calming down a little bit going into tomorrow. But the big talk for tomorrow and the rest of this weekend is possibly some severe weather. Looking at your future track here, by tomorrow morning, we might see a couple showers in the area, maybe even a rumble of thunder if we're lucky. But then tomorrow afternoon, the clouds clear and that gives way for some big trouble coming our way out of the north. You can see, look at that, coming out of the west, northwest that is, possibly some severe weather. And they actually got severe weather outlook issued by the National Weather Service for those northwestern counties. But after the cold front rise, more of a little cool breeze coming through, we drop to the 60s for a few days next week, but we have a possible alert day issue for the weekend for the weather. We're saving off those microwave temperatures of the summer. <laughs> yes, not yet, they're not here yet. All right, let's hold off for a few months. Yes, please stay weather aware though. And thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Remember, follow us on our YouTube channel and join Karina, Don, Mac, and Zach today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10. Practice your, uh, practice your pie.